Hey, we're on our way to the Royal Alex Theater. I get to meet a knight. Oh, I know. I work with Sir Tox a lot every morning, but a real honest-to-God knight, Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber. I'm going to talk with him, going to uh, ask him some questions about the new play, The Boys in the Photograph, and uh, I'm a little nervous, so um, we'll see what happens. Here we go. You don't ignore him just to fight a war you cannot win. The Boys in the Photograph, coming to our stages here in Toronto uh, at the Royal Alexander Theatre in ja ooh, a week now. Okay. Now this, of course, as you know, obviously, since you both wrote it, was uh, first launched in 2000 in London to great critical acclaim, ran for a year, and then it kind of went away. What happened in the ensuing eight years, eight to nine years, before it's made it to the Toronto stage? Uh, well, Andrew and I always felt that despite being very, very proud of the show that was called The Beautiful Game in those days, uh, we always felt that it was kind of unfinished business. We, we did have a, a, a great critical hit, but there was something... Um, in, in the long run, the, the hero remained unredeemed. We felt that the story... The story wasn't simply wasn't positive enough, and also a great deal of Andrew had had thoughts about the music. I had words about the script, and we had the great good fortune with this unfinished business for to to make a partnership with David Mervish, who who was fascinated with the idea that a musical can be developed in the ways that they used to be developed. Um, and so here we have our, our reinvention, and very much a, a, a brand new show with with three new songs, a very a very different and more uplifting storyline. And so the boys in the photograph. A story of love challenged by hate um, and, of course, triumphing, uh, is, is arriving here really for an all Canadian world premiere, basically, here in uh, Winnipeg and, and now in Toronto. You've had varying degrees of success, mostly extraordinary, with your shows, um, both in London and then when you brought them over here, to especially to New York. Do you find that there's a different sensibility in audiences, like what will fly and be a, just an amazing hit in London? Do you ever wonder if the same thing is going to, uh, to happen when you get it over on this side of the pond? No, frankly. I think um, a, sh a hit show really is a hit show wherever it goes. And I think with musicals, you tend to find that uh, what's a big hit in London is a big hit in New York or the other way around. And you just look back over the history of them. I mean, the, the interesting thing about the boys in the photograph, since you asked the question, is, is that probably, critically, uh, over the years, it's probably been the best received of any of the scores that I, I've written. But, of course, the subject itself is probably the reason why it wasn't revived uh, quicker than it was. Uh, because although it won the London Critics Award and all of that, it, it actually closed three days before September the 11th. And the subject of the show is the absolute needlessness of religious war. And of course, everybody said, when it opened in London, and of course it was called The Beautiful Game then, everybody said, oh well, it's Andrew Lloyd Webber's football musical. It's nothing to do with football. It's about a bunch of kids who live in Belfast in 1969 and all they want to do is to play football, but it's what happens because of the religious war that, uh, well, you know, what you can call, could, whatever way, because like most religious wars, of course, it wasn't really a religious war at all. Um, but it was a conflict that changed their lives and for the worse. Uh, and the, and, and, and our story is a, is a very tough one. But everybody said when we opened it, well, hang on a moment. The Northern Ireland conflict is completely over now. We've got the Good Friday Agreement. It's all been done and dusted. Why are you writing about this? Well, ten years later, um, looking at the production that Ben has brilliantly directed here, I can say go round to the Royal Alex Theatre and you'll see exactly why I wanted to do the story that Ben wrote. It's a fantastic plot for a composer. Um, it, it's completely relevant today. It's more relevant today than it was when we wrote it ten years ago, in my view. Wonderful. And you have a nice close relationship with Toronto as well, Ben. Uh, we are all so grateful to you for We Will Rock You and the very, very long run that it had here in this city. You seem to have a nice relationship with Toronto. Well, I mean, this, it, it, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm very much the, the, the gainer in, in that relationship. Yes, I, I did come here with, uh, with We Will Rock You, which led me to not only meet David Mervish and get involved with the Mervish Production Organization, but to discover the extraordinary uh, breadth of talent and depth of talent in the Canadian musical theatre industry. Uh, it's, it's astonishing. I mean, I think second to none in the world. And, and that was really the inspiration for me to say to David Mervish, look, you know, if, Andrew's, if Andrew were happy... 
perhaps we could develop this this show we believe so strongly in you know which is such a such a timely and re relevant theme you know does kate corrupt or does love redeem and of course there's plenty of girls in this show as well for the boys they're not just interested in football um and uh, and so certainly the fact that uh, I've had such an extraordinary experience, not just here, but in Winnipeg, because we made our, our relationship with the MTC in Winnipeg. And uh, all across Canada, you have a theatre arts basis, which absolutely not only punches far, harder than its weight, but is really second to none in the world. And I have enjoyed every moment of my relationship. And this, of course, is an all-Canadian production. The only Brits involved are myself and Andrew. And that, that's pretty unique for what is effectively a Lloyd Webber premiere. And I think something which... I hope Toronto is proud of, but which I'm enormously grateful for. There's a wonderful anecdote about the lead in the show who, when he got the role and found out right there on the stage, just dropped to his knees. <laughs> yes, Tony Lepage, who's turned out to be the most stunning leading man. I mean, Andrew was uh, bowled over yesterday and was kind enough to tell Tony, so um, Tony's still on his knees having been <laughs> complimented by Andrew. I hope my son will be proud of me when I fight I'm fighting for him. Share the love I leave for you with him. And so we all must pay the price for such a stupid sacrifice. Don't you understand that this won't end till we last meet? For any young person. To, to be offered the lead in, as I say, Lloyd Webber, which is, is brand new and a very exciting, it is an extraordinary uh, break, but he's risen to the challenges as Erica Peck, our leading lady, and all our wonderful company. So, yeah, he, he's pretty excited, but he'll contain it on stage. He's a professional. We hear Ben talk about uh, a Lloyd Webber. You know, it's almost a brand name because mm -hmm. there is, when you have an Andrew Lloyd Webber musical, you come to expect this incredible level of, of, uh, of well, um, wonderful talent and entertainment and all of that, that that you have provided for us. How do you keep on performing to this level year after year? Do you ever kind of get a little hot under the collar and go, oh God, now, now what do I do? Well, it uh, is all about really love for theatre. I, mean, I, I love writing musicals. It's, um, it's what I do. And uh, I've had a kind of little kind of twist in my career since... Uh, of course, since it happened in Toronto too, um, since I've been doing casting shows on television, which has been a great oh, excitement. And of course, uh, wonderful. I came in and I did the end of The Sound of Music here. And, and, and talking about the depth of talent, I mean, you, you only have to see the two girls who came through in The Sound of Music here, and you were saying, good God, I mean, these girls could have been uh, huge successes anywhere in the world, and probably will be. And it's it's just I, I love writing musicals. My next show is the sequel to the Phantom of the Opera called Love Never Dies, which Ben has had a huge part in as well. In that he um, basically unlocked and created a lot of the story for it. It's been twenty years in the making now, mm -hmm. uh, and that's probably the biggest gamble I've ever taken in my career because to try and to try and do a sequel to the Phantom is almost asking for the impossible. But uh, it's recorded and finished and done now. Uh, and uh, so it's on to the next case. We're in rehearsals any minute. And, and what, what we see with this extraordinary double bill that, that Andrew's this year is, that, I mean, a, a contemporary piece like The Boys in the Photograph, quite a folk based score, I mean, extraordinary um, pop and folk tunes, and of course, you know, some, some big ballads too. And then, and then Andrew's massive, you know, this little great splendour. Is Baroque the right word? I don't know. But the hugeness of something like a Phantom Project. And, and I think it's wonderful that we have these two contrasting projects that we're both so involved in. And of course, The Boys in the Photograph is first off the blocks. And I, I, I think that um, people would be very, very stunned to see such a contemporary story. Um, and of course, a story which is very book based. And Andrew did me an enormous compliment in in basically saying he wanted to do a book musical, which is uh, as opposed to sung through, you know, that there would be a kind of play as well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, he supported me every inch of the way on that. So, so we have a very, you know, a very different experience of Lloyd Webber here at the uh, uh, at the, the Royal Alex, but one which will also be hugely familiar because every two is a rock solid winner. Wonderful. We're so looking forward to this, and of course, to the to the fandom. Uh, you can tell us what the plot is of the new fandom, or not? Is this a strangely, great state secret? Strangely, no, we can't. <laughs> really? Honestly? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, All well... All we can say, though, is that it's ten years later, and that the phantom lives in Coney Island. Oh, really?
Seriously? Yeah. Oh, okay. That sounds uh, that sounds very interesting. My radio partner would like to audition for the Phantom the Full Figured Years. Is there any <laughs> chance of that? Well, he can come and pray. He can come along, and uh, we have an unbelievable uh, figure. There's only one sort of senior actor in the company. It's all a wonderful young cast in the boys in the photograph. Young people, okay. incredibly exuberant. But there's one senior figure, Richard McMillan, a brilliant Canadian actor, multi-award winning. Uh, but if he ever gets tired of it, you know, okay. you can get your partner in, and he can he, well, can, he can play the priest. Okay, as long as they can still get up at four in the morning. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank, thank you so you. much for your time. I'm sure it's going to be a long day, but uh, break a leg, thank and, and thank so looking forward to it next week.